Let's take a look at the Dodge Division's police pursuit for the California Highway Patrol booklet. Paragraph 2. These police cars are equipped with Dodge's optional proven Magnum 440 cubic inch displacement engine with four Venturi carburetor and dual exhaust system. This high performance power plant develops a maximum brake horsepower of 375, underlined because these are the big horsepower, not those tiny ones they have now, which has helped tame many a law violator. And there it is. You can tell that this is a police package 440 based on the giant oversized Lee Staville alternator and the Lee Staville adjustable voltage regulator. If you don't have enough voltage, you just turn that little screw and boom, instant more voltage. Nice little overview of the engine compartment. This car is pretty clean, as you can see. It has the other police accessories in here, uh, electronic siren, flasher assembly, fuse junction block, Another junction block, a PA speaker, the older uh, electromechanical siren. This thing spins. It's got electric uh, motor on it. Also has a the hole. The hole in the core support is factory cut by Dodge to allow the the noise of that beautiful machine to escape. Um, that's an overview of the engine compartment. We'll continue in a second. I want to show you guys what makes this power plant in police use more effective than, uh, I don't know, say other big blocks from other competing car companies. We'll go over the details. Actually, let me rephrase this. I want to go over the details that make the 69 Polara faster than the 68 Polara and faster than the 70 Dodge Monaco or Polara, basically the same car. Uh, we'll go over some details in a second. I'll show you guys uh, why I think it's better. You're likely wondering, why is a 69 Dodge Polara faster than the 68 or the 70 version? And I think I can answer those questions with some observations I made on this car. There's quite a few details different about this as, say, uh, let's say a 68. First of all, 69 was the first year for the new body style. If you look at 68 Polaras, they're much more upright, uh, a little taller, very square cars. Uh, the styling is one issue as to why they may be faster. There's, there's another one, which I noticed while I was looking at this car. In 69, the 440 Magnum had a, a pretty high compression ratio. And in 1970, Chrysler dropped it by about half a point. It went from like 10.1 in 69 to 9.7 in 70. So you have a little reduction in power there. But also, there is another thing I noticed about the 69 that I think enhances its capability as a high-speed pursuit engine. Give me a second, and uh, let me take the air cleaner off, and I'll show you guys. You can see the 69 440 Magnum air cleaner has a dual snorkel design, one inlet on each side. That is what the air filter looks like without the top on. And you're probably thinking, well, that's a pretty good sized air filter. And you're right, because if you compare it to, this is an air filter from a 1970 Dodge 440 Magnum. And you can see it is much less capacity there. You guys see uh, the difference in size? So 69, had a much more high flow air cleaner system than like a 70. And I don't know what the air filters are like on like a Ford police car or, or something like that of 1969, but they're probably like this size. Whereas the 69 Polara has that size. So that is one point I believe that makes the 69 Polara faster. Let me, uh, set you guys up for the next point. If you look at big block V8s from the late 60s, I think Chrysler did a better job with the exhaust systems than the other makers. If you look at that exhaust manifold, and I know it's hard to see here, but this is a very upswept design. It has a gentle curve like that. A lot of exhaust manifolds on on even high performance V8s of the time were very simply made 
like a log. They did not have any streamlining effect to them. These are our high capacity, two and a half inch outlet streamlined exhaust manifolds. I have some that are off the car that are very similar. And so off the car, you can see what the manifold looks like. It's very free flowing design. This is the driver's side. And that is the passenger side. So these manifolds are very efficient and you can see they have a very large outlet flange. It's two and a half inch inside diameter. So very low restriction exhaust, which is another point I believe made the 69 440 Magnum one of the fastest police car engines because the intake breathing through the air cleaner and the exhaling through the exhaust is highly efficient and uh, it adds more horsepower in the top end, which is where you, where you need it if you're going for all out speed. Bring you guys back on the next point. So this point is true of all the Dodge Highway Patrol cars through the 60s, but the 69 continued to use manual steering. There's no power steering pump. So there's no loss of trying to drive a pressurized steering system. The manual steering gives good road feel at high speeds, a little harder to turn around town, but the Highway Patrol was not really parallel parking all that often. Bring you guys back in a sec. The 69 Polara came with a different tire package than the previous police pursuits. If you look in the specification sheet here, they originally came, and these are bias belted tires, with an 855-15 tire, which is two inches larger in circumference and, you know, seven sixteenths of an inch taller overall which translates into a, a slightly faster top speed with the same gear ratio if you've got the power to pull it. The uh, older tires were the 845-15s, which apparently were discontinued back in the day. This car does not have those tires. It has modern radials on it now. But that was one little detail that added to make the 69 Polara better than the 68 version, which had the smaller tires. Let's talk a little bit about the transmission in this car. These cars came with Chrysler's 727 three-speed automatic transmission. That transmission, the aluminum case, torque converter coupling, uh, delivers high breakaway ratios and efficient cruising. These transmissions, I don't know if, well, <laughs> transmissions have pumps in them and it takes power to drive them. It's not, uh, like if this car had a standard transmission, if you had 400 horsepower at the engine, going through the transmission where it took no power, you'd have 400 horsepower coming out. But because automatics have pumps and fluids and bands, there's a certain amount of power consumed just in being able to drive them. The 727 is a fairly high efficient, efficient transmission uh, in that it takes 45 horsepower to drive it. If you compare it to say something like a Ford C6 automatic, which is what the big block Fords would have had at the same era, the drag of that transmission is something like 55 horsepower. So right off the bat, if you've got a Ford, you're giving up 10 horsepower just trying to drive your transmission. So this car with the highly efficient intake and the highly efficient exhaust and the efficient transmission is picking up little bits of horsepower along the way so that there's very little horsepower loss going to the rear tires. That translates into a car that is fast. The state of California bought like 1,560 of these cars in 1969. Dodge Division supplied them with their own special book to tell how special these cars were. Apparently if you buy you know, 1,600 cars, you get your own book. It has all the specs. It has all the options they wanted. So they, these cars were basically custom made for the state. Special paint codes, not normally available. You know, 
all kinds of stuff. It has the octane requirements of the power plant. Anyway, it's a pretty interesting book. I'll put some pages of it up at the end of the video so you can uh, study it more thoroughly. Here's the uh, CHP memo from January 2nd, 1969. This is when they, the cars were delivered and the CHP had to accept delivery of them and they make sure that they met all the requirements. So this is the official write-up from the people that did the testing at the Highway Patrol. And uh, obviously it says, as far as could be determined, the 69 Dodge Patrol car meets or exceeds all the physical and class performance. It goes on to say about the options and it says, a speed of 135 miles per hour was reached from a standing start after a two mile run and the vehicle was still accelerating. So they measured this car from zero to two miles and determined that it was still accelerating at that point. Test drivers reported the handling qualities are excellent. The brakes passed their test, but they uh, definitely smoked them and got them a little warm. <laughs> I don't know exactly what the test procedure was for the back-to-back uh, -back 100 to zero braking test they performed, but they found the brakes faded just a bit. Uh, it goes on to say some other comments about the car, uh, recommendations, and once again, I'll put this at the end of the video so you guys can zoom in on it and really geek out. But it appears the 69 Dodge Patrol car being delivered to the department meets all the specification requirements, which is what the state was interested in. And it's signed by the people that actually did the testing. So that's a, uh, that's a pretty official document. And I would say that if they said it went 135 in the zero to two mile run and was still accelerating, that's legitimate. Uh, here's a trade magazine. Highway Patrolman from December 1970. It shows how the uh, CHP used to drive these cars. That's a pretty cool shot, huh? And it's got some, uh, you know, the making of a California Highway Patrolman and some, some shots from the test track, smoke in the tire. Well, that's the other thing. These cars only came with a, with a one-legged rear end. They were not pause traction. So, uh, you know, with a modern day pause attraction, which this particular car has, the zero to 60 time is much improved because with a, with a one-legger, <laughs> you cannot launch with any kind of throttle without incinerating the tire. Anyway, I thought, the, uh, I thought this magazine is pretty cool. I'll put some pictures of it at the end of the video for that too. Uh, another funny, funny thing, Dodge, this car was not specified as fast as it could have been built. Like it was specified to meet the needs of the California Highway Patrol. So it has things such as a 323 rear end gear ratio. These cars could have been had with a 276 rear end gear ratio, which is a taller gear, which would equate to, tall, to faster speed if you had the power to pull it. The other funny thing I noticed, this is the, uh, the 440 Magnum carburetor calibration. And if you look at the air fuel ratios, it's quite lean, 15.9 at idle and under maximum power, 13.9. Anybody in the motor game with gasoline knows that you want like a high 12, 13.0 or so for maximum horsepower. So this carburetor was not set up with the idea of making the engine as powerful as it could be. It was set up for emissions, which is another funny point because prior to 1968 well let's, let's say 1967 was the last year in america where the automakers basically had free run building their engines uh very minimal emission controls that kind of thing 68 and newer were basically all emission compliant vehicles and you don't think about like muscle cars and 68 and 9 chargers as being emissions compliant but if you ever had the chance to talk to old, uh, old carburetor men, they will tell you that the Carter AVS carburetor, which is what this car has on it, is junk. Uh, they only liked the Carter AFB carburetors. And I think the reason they preferred that, which is the older version of the Carter, is because the AFBs were never jetted this lean. They were always tuned for performance, whereas the Carter AVS was set up to be very lean 
in the, the stock configuration because once again the people building the car were not setting out to build the fastest police cars <laughs> they were setting out to build cars that complied with the government and built to a price point and so that's what this one is so you fast forward to the the year 2023 we can take the carter avs and change the calibrations so it no longer runs that lean and you could change the rear end gears to the taller ratio so you can bench race all you want as to how fast this car may be with the proper uh, fuel calibration and a taller gear this car is the fastest american four-door police car of the 20th century what about the 95 chevy caprice there, there are ill-informed members of society who believe that a 1995 Caprice with a 350 small block and a four-door sedan is faster than a 69 440 big block in a four-door sedan. I can tell you it's not. I own both, and this car right here would beat a 95 Caprice with a plug wire hanging off of it. Um... That's a big statement, but uh, I have factual documentation, which I'll go over in a second, as tested by the various police agencies, and nowhere will you see numbers for a Caprice that are real numbers that exceed the performance of this car. All right, let me, uh, let me break out some supporting documents to, to further bolster my position that this is the fastest four-door domestic police car of the 20th century. And here is my supporting documentation. Three sources, the CHP, these guys here are all from the Michigan State Police, and Superstock Magazine, who did a test on a 69 Polara back in the day. Exhibit A, the CHP tested a zero to two mile run and they achieved 135 miles per hour with the comments that the vehicle was still accelerating. So they only measured it zero to two miles. The Michigan State Police, this is their 1996 model year patrol vehicle testing report, which was 84 pages. I condensed it down to the four most important pages. Uh, they did the Caprice, the 5.7, 10 and a half to one compression. This is the high performance one. I'll uh, put all these pages at the end of the video so you guys can really uh, zoom in on it. Their methodology was to determine the actual top speed attainable by each test vehicle within a distance of 14 miles from a standing start. So after a 14 mile run of running the Caprice as fast as they could get it to go, it went 139 miles an hour, which is evidenced right here. 139 top speed Caprice. This is the summary of everything. They ran a quarter mile with the Caprice at 16.14 at 88 miles an hour. Then we have the Superstock magazine. July of 69, if you want to pick up a copy for yourself. They ran a quarter mile with this car, 69 Dodge CHP Polara. They ran 1420s at 100 miles an hour. Top speed, they reference 147 miles an hour. Now that number is apparently coming from a Chrysler test track. But nonetheless, there it is in print. Some period documentation to support my position that the 69 Dodge CHP Polara is the fastest four-door domestic sedan of the 20th century. Or police use. Thanks for watching.